In this video, I want to go back to the very basics and in the context of CFA level one, that means time value of money problems. Uh, so in this recording, I'll be computing the future value of a relatively simple investment. And then in subsequent videos, we're going to take that forward and do more advanced things, which are quite representative of what you may expect to find on the exam. So if time value of money is something you want to get right, please keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Given a projected rate of return of 7% per annum, what is the estimated value of $50,000 invested today after two and five years of growth with annual compounding? And we've got options A, B and C with two answers. So there are essentially two ways in which you can approach time value of money problems. One is the uh, way in which we basically type all the inputs into the calculator and follow the uh, appropriate formula. Or the second way, we use the time value of money worksheet, and I'll do that second. So for the first method, um, what always helps is if you draw a timeline, and on this timeline, I'm going to draw T0. That's the uh, point of the initial investment, so time zero. I'm also going to have T1 uh, over here, and T2, that's the end of year two. I could theoretically have the end of year three, four, and five as well. Um, however, I'm not going to do that. Over here, I'm drawing a downward pointing arrow, and the downward direction is supposed to signify a cash outflow, a cash outflow of 50,000. Now, this is the amount invested in accordance with the question. So 50,000 invested today, and let's call this the PV or the present uh, value of the investment. And obviously, um, at least in part one of the question, we're thinking about what's going to be the future value over here. So FV, something uh, positive that we'll be able to take out from the investment in two years time. So this is essentially the future value at time two. Now, the uh, longhand way of doing this is to say, okay, what would happen if this grows at the um, rate of return, which is given in the question, and that was 7%? Well, after one year, this 50,000 would still be worth uh, 50,000, although on top of this, we would have some accrual of interest. So some accrual of a return, some kind of growth. So this would be 50,000 times 7%, wouldn't it? Um, so this 7% would be from a uh, from an initial value of 50,000. Let's have a look. 3,500. Add it to this. Okay, so giving 53,500. Now, the same thing, and you know, for many of you, this will be obvious, but for those of you just starting out with time value of money, that may not be so obvious. If you take 50,000 and multiply it by a factor of 1.07, so 1 plus the rate of return required, so let me see, 50,000 times 1.07, you're going to get 53,500 anyway. And in the same way, we could repeat the uh, these actions and say, okay, at the end of year two, we're still going to have 53,500. But on top of this, interest computed at 7%. So plus 7% interest. Let's see what that gives on the calculator times 1.0. Well, I want to do 53,500, sorry, times 0 0.07. That's going to get give us an, ex an extra 3,000. 745 on top of what we already had at the end of the previous year. So 53,500. And I see a total of 57,245. And once again, the same logic as before applies. I could have gotten to the same number, I guess, by taking the result from over here and multiplying that by a factor of 1.07. Let's just see if that's true, 53,500 times 1.07, yeah, that gives 57,245. And essentially, that is the answer to at least part of the question, what's going to be the future value of the investment at the end of year two? This much. Okay, let's turn this into a more universal formula for future value at the end of a certain period in the life of our investment. So 
f v and I'm going to write n meaning the future value at a certain point in time which we which we are calling n is equal to the present value so how much this is worth today times a factor of in brackets 1 plus the required rate of return so r to the power of n and in our case this would be obviously equal to future value at the end of year two equal to 50,000 times one plus seven percent so 1.07 to the power of two because I've had two over here so I'm going to need two over here as well now let's see how to do this on the calculator I'm assuming you've had the opportunity to format your calculator in the appropriate way um, there is a separate video on how to format our calculators and I suggest you do that right now if you haven't done it and come back to this video once your calculator is pro appropriately formatted to handle uh, quantitative methods problems. Um, the link to that video is included in the comments section or in the description of this video. So 50,000 times 1.07 and look I'm now pressing the x to the power of 2 button, so x squared button, which is going to square the 1.07. If you didn't format your calculator before, in accordance with my suggestions, it wouldn't necessarily do this in the required order. And I'm pressing equals, and as you can see, 57,245, that answer comes up. Okay, we can therefore, I guess, quite easily also calculate the future value for this problem at the end of year five, so FV5, that's going to require 50,000 times 1.07, but to the power accordingly of five. And let's see how we do this on the calculator. Well, once again, 50,000 times 1.07, and this time, because we're not squaring, we're not raising to the power of two, but to the power of five, I'm going to use a different key. That key is Y, to the power of x. This key which sits uh, just next door to the brackets. So press this one and now input the power to which you want to raise. In, in this case it's 5 and equals. And I'm looking at a result of 70,128. And when you take this number and this number and check this against the um, answers to the question, you can see that the relevant answer is b. Okay, we know what the answer is. Let me, however, present a different way for solving this question. And this different way is going to use or utilize your time value of money worksheet, which is absolutely critical for this exam, not just for the quantitative methods section of it, but also for fixed income, for equity investments, to some extent at least. A lot of corporate finance problems are used, uh, are solved using that worksheet. Now, the worksheet consists of the third row from the top on your calculator. So the one starting with N, I over Y, PV, PMT, and FV. And what you need to do here is simply provide the inputs for the problem. But first, always, absolutely always, make sure to clear the time value of money worksheet. And that means pressing the following sequence of buttons. Second, the second key, followed by the FV key, which has clear um, TVM on top of it. So that is that is its secondary function. That's why we pressed second, followed by FV to access this section or this, this, uh, this function. Okay, and now you're in it, you're supposed to, well, now you've got the worksheet cleared, um, you're supposed to provide the relevant inputs. And the inputs are going to be as follows. We're going to have the number two, followed by the n button that's the number of periods because i'm trying to compute the future value at the end of year two so two followed by n after that i'm going to um, have the next input which is the rate of return required on the investment that's seven so seven followed by i over y that's the rate of return seven i over y now for pv i'm going to have 
the 50,000. But I'm going to make this a negative number. So I'm pressing 50,000 or I'm keying in 50,000. And I'm following, the, following this up with the plus minus key, which is going to turn my input into a negative figure. So press PV because I need or I want my calculator to understand that this is a cash outflow. This is the amount of money we're investing. Okay, so that's money flowing out. Next, I'm going to have uh, PMT. Now PMT, because I'm going from left to right. So I've got my N, I've got my I over Y, I've got my, uh, sorry, my input. Uh, I wanted to make this PV. Sorry, I should should press the PV button here. I did it on my calculator, but I didn't write it down. Now, if this was generating any interim cash flows, I would have something called PMT. We're going to use that later on. In this question, there are no such cash inflows from the investment. So the only thing I want my calculator to do now is compute CPT, the CPT key, which is um, at the very top of the calculator keys on the left hand side, CPT followed by FV. And um, your calculator will show you a result 57,245, which is the same result which we had um, when we did it sort of the long way using the re uh, relevant formula. Now, the nice thing about using the time value of money worksheet is that it stores the values which you've already input. Sometimes that works against you if you forget to clear the time value of money worksheet, if you forget to do this. But um, essentially, because it stores the inputs, you can easily just overwrite the um, certain inputs and keep the others the same. So if I now want to know what will be the future value of this investment at the end of year five, but keeping all the other um, inputs the same, so having a required rate of return of 7% and the same PV, I would simply say, well, let's have five for N. and allow the calculator to compute FV, but this time with the changed input for N, so CPT FV. And as you can see, it shows me an answer of 70,128, which is exactly the same as we uh, wrote out before. So in the exam, whenever you have one of these relatively simple time value of money problems, what I would probably do is use this method. It's quick, although sometimes if you know you're going to make several changes because you need to calculate the value at a certain point in time and then at another and just change a single input, maybe it's better to follow this procedure because your calculator will store, store the relevant inputs. But before you get or before you go to any uh, fresh problem um, in time value of money, it's always good just to make sure that you clear the time value of money worksheet. So do second followed by clear TVM, and that will remove from your calculator's memory anything relating to problems you've already solved.